All right. So this is another one that I tried to match uh, the theme of the river. You were complaining, I think, about one of the poems that was too depressing. So this is fine. This is just about how my grandmother died when she was 29, fighting in the Warsaw Uprising, hit by a grenade by the river. Uh, just, uh, just, I like... The, when I moved to England, right, and I moved to England and started to perform poetry, people would come up to me and ask me, um, this is all good, Bogdan, but why don't you write something funny? <laughs> and, I, and I would always say the same thing, which is, have you not heard about Poland? <laughs> we, don't, we don't do funny. <laughs> we do other things really well, <laughs> like getting invaded by people. That's a good. We started a country between Germany and Russia. Has to be. Has to have a reason. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So my. Just do the poem. The poem is called Almost Certainly. It goes like this. It's uh, It's almost certainly impossible to appreciate the beauty of an explosion. But I like to think of it as a game of pinball, with a single atom suddenly propelled forward, bouncing back and forth, losing electrons and hurtling through the gaps in what we see as a solid thing, a unit, like a grain of gunpowder, say. Until suddenly, multiple, with a flash of many colored lights, all the others come alive and then things become much too fast to follow as they turn nervous and frantic and twitchy and as they twist and tumble together, they leave behind them trails of searing light and weave them into the shape of a flower. You can only see bloom once. And it's almost certainly unbearable to try and hear the music in the noise of an explosion. But I like to think of it as that moment in the song when the bass line finally kicks in. After the introductory clicks and clacks of the drumsticks smack the edge of the snare and the closed hi hat and yeah, yeah, we've all heard far too many songs not to know what's coming, but still, when the muffled chords explode, triggered by the kick drum, they reach through your throat, down to your stomach, and you can never be ready for this. And it's almost certainly immaterial what the weather was like at the time of an explosion. But in my mind, I see an old sepia snapshot of a perfect summer afternoon. With the weather, all the better because you have to provide your own blue for the sky, your own white for the clouds, your own faded red for the bricks, your own brown for those strange stains on the pavement. There are no people in this picture. The exposure was too long, so just here and there, a hand that lingered on a doorknob, a hesitating foot, a hint of presence, but no more. No more. And it's almost certainly irrelevant. One life lost in an explosion. But I like to believe that someone, somewhere, refuses to acknowledge numbers like 200,000 or 85%, and instead they chronicle meticulously the pattern of displaced cobblestones, the frantic flight of startled birds, the words still legible on letters spilling from a leather bag, and the balletic grace of a body flying slowly through the air, spilling blood like an afterthought on this perfect summer afternoon day. They will know that she was 29, that she hadn't seen her two sons for a week, that she had written a love letter to her husband in the morning, believing against all evidence that this time, this time, things will just work themselves out. And I like to believe that just before the shrapnel hit, she stopped for a moment, balancing on one foot, her hand on the doorknob, thinking she had just heard the beginning of a song.